Hello, I'm Aaron Hendren. I'm a filmmaker from Albuquerque, and I'm using my YouTube channel to talk about some movies. I like a lot of different kinds of movies, and the rules for this project are that I will only review movies that I like, and I will break that rule anytime I feel like it. Also, I will be discussing plot points and spoilers. This week, I want to talk about a movie from 1954, Rear Window. Rear Window was written by John Michael Hayes, based on the short story by Cornell Woolrich. It was directed by Alfred Hitchcock and stars James Stewart and Grace Kelly. I can't really tell you too much about Hitchcock that hasn't already been said. If you're interested, there are moment-by-moment -moment breakdowns of Hitchcock scenes that you can watch. I'm going to focus on a few moments and the story of this movie to talk about why I like it. L.B. Jeffries is a photographer and a man of adventure who is stuck in his apartment, recovering with a broken leg. He wants more adventure, and when his editor gives his assignments to other people, he threatens his editor with getting married. Jeffries is dating a perfect woman named Lisa, but he doesn't want to marry her because she's so perfect she's not ordinary. He also has a healthcare worker named Stella who comes to his apartment to get exposition from him and help him get into trouble. He whiles away his idle, solitary hours by looking out of his window and watching his neighbors. There's a sculptor and a ballet dancer and a lady with a dog. There's the honeymooners and the unhappy couple and the lonely lady. And there's a guy who plays piano for cameos. Ooh, let's talk about the score. Most of the music on the soundtrack is the music that Jeffries actually hears in his apartment. That's Amore is playing in the courtyard when the honeymooners come home. There's a loud party with the guests singing Mona Lisa for Lisa's character. The piano player is often working on Jeffries and Lisa's theme, and on it goes. The audience watching Rear Window shares a lot of Jeffries' experiences. I wonder if that means something. We're about 30 minutes in, and most of the story has been dedicated to setting up characters and about Jeffrey's misgivings about marrying the perfect woman. Will he ever accept true love? Well, who cares, it turns out, because he thinks one of his neighbors is a murderer. He hears a scream and a crash and notices suspicious behavior from his salesman neighbor, who was one half of the unhappy couple. So, Jeffries begins spying on him through a telephoto lens. Whoa, I just realized that this is the second review I've done about spying on neighbors. Detective Doyle is Jeffries' old war buddy, and he comes by to explain away all of the salesman's suspicious behavior. Anytime the story tries to convince us that the salesman's wife wasn't murdered, we, the audience, and Jeffries, the character, feel a little ghoulish disappointment. Who directed this again? Oh yeah, Hitchcock. Yeah, the man totally killed his wife. Lisa comes back to the apartment with some feminine intuition about handbags and jewelry. Doyle tells her that stuff might sell magazines, but in the real world, it's still a fantasy. Undeterred, Lisa sets out to break into the man's apartment because if she can find the woman's wedding ring, that would be proof positive that a murder had taken place. Indeed, Lisa finds the ring, and the next scene is one of the most chilling things I have ever seen in a movie ever. Seriously, as of this recording, you have had 65 years to watch Rear Window, and I'm still not going to ruin it for you in case you haven't seen it yet. I will tell you that Jeffries falls and re-breaks both of his legs and possibly gets vertigo. In the end, Lisa still doesn't have a ring on her finger, but we assume that Jeffries has learned to love. I hope you liked this video. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. And please tell me what you thought about Rear Window in the comments. If you would like to watch any of my movies, go ahead.